Would you like to know how you can send tasks automatically in System 1 so you don't have to worry about whether or not you've done it or not? Whether that's booking appointments, whether that's confirming whether you've done a referral or not, or various other parts of the system. It'd be nice if you could just type and it's done. Well, in this episode, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. I call it something called task flow, and in this episode, you're going to see the exact process of how to send a task without having to worry about whether you've sent it or not. Want to see more? Check out this episode as we tech enhance your primary care and learning. So I'm going to explain what this is briefly. So this is based on a principle where I can put a couple of codes in text into the patient notes and it will automatically launch a task that I can then send to um, the patient to different groups and stuff. So for example, if I want to book a patient in for a phone review with myself in whatever time frame, I can automate the system to do that when I put a particular code in the free text of the notes. I'm going to show you how to set that up right now. The first thing you need to do is go to task templates. So go to setup, uh, data entry, and go to task templates. Okay. This is the step you do need to do first. So you need to create a task template. So you click on new template, and then you create a task. So give it a name, give it an icon. System one loves its icons. Give it a description, which group you want to send this to. So for example, if I want to send it to an individual task mem member, I can do that. I can send it to usual clinician, patients, GP, or whatever. But I can send it to user group, and I can select whichever group I want. So for example, if I'm doing a booking one, I'd send that to our reception team to book, for example. Give it a category, so you can stick a category with any of the existing ones that you've got. If it's nothing that fits, you can either use miscellaneous or you have to create a new task group. Um, so, for example, let's go to, I know I've got patient booking somewhere. Appointment booking, there we are. Okay. You can have it start or not start, depending on the urgency. So I wouldn't, uh, I'd only do that if it's something relatively urgent. And you can stick a flag next to it if you want to, and you can even put a due date on it. And then you can put something in the task body in terms of directing what the task template should look like. So if we look at one I made earlier, I've got this one, which is my HG phone. So this is for me to create a task to our team. So task for HG phone review, it automatically goes to our reception team and the appointment booking template. And it states, contact patient guardian to book patient for review with HG, for review with HG, so that's me, by phone in, and there's blank. Only book another GP if nil available, because sometimes that happens and it may be relevant for me to do that. The blank part is so I can text input some additional information based on what the time frame may be. We'll see why that's important in a second. Next, you need to go to protocols. So you go to setup, data, a workflow support, and open a protocol. And then you need to create a new protocol. Okay. Now I'm not going to do this because it's going to take a little bit longer, but what I am going to find is my existing ones that I have. So, and this basically is, shows you what it's pre populated. So if we go to the HG phone booking, so if I amend that, but obviously you've created a new one, you fill in the details. So the name, what type of protocol it is, what it does, all that kind of stuff. The trigger is the important part. So you simply go to trigger and you ask, the, uh, allow this to be um, automatically launched then you trigger protocol is free text entered. Okay, so you just scroll down to that is relevant to this. And I would recommend putting something into the code that makes this more sensible. So as you can see, mine is hashtag HG phone. It's important to remember this is case sensitive as well. You could put expressions and stuff, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because you don't want this to be accidentally launched. Um, so prompt to launch a protocol when multiple protocols apply. That's just so it doesn't block if another protocol happens to be running in the background. And then you can specify this either to individual clinicians um, by their staff uh, by their staff member name, like for myself. So that launches for me, or you can restrict it to a particular role. So, for example, if you just wanted something that launches when a GP does it or when a pharmacist does it, for example, you can set it to particular roles. You can then set the filters if it's relevant to do so. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to book a patient with one of your nurses, but they can't see particular age groups, then you can set the minimum age, for example, for that or gender so for example if it's i guess smears that kind of stuff um and then simply you need to go to the um, and then simply you need to go to the design and the design is dead simple you just simply go to action um task template no no task sorry um and it, it will bring up the various different tasks that you can do so you, you can either do um apply a task template 
or apply a task template and send task with no user interaction. I don't like using the cancel validation one. Um, but basically, the reason why there's two different ones, if you use apply task template, this allows you to put some extra information in before the task launches. If you do the apply task template and send with no user interaction, this will send the task automatically on the time that you save the record. Um, and the reason why I don't like using that for this particular kind of thing is, like I said, I might want to specify the time frame I want to see the patient in. That task is already gone, so to change it, I have to go back, find the task, and edit it from there, whereas my way allows you to add that in. If it's a task that you know doesn't require you any further interaction, then absolutely, action, then absolutely you can do that. You can just have it send automatically so you don't have to worry about it. And that's really good for things like referral reminders. So that's one of the other ones I've created. So if I type in hashtag referral, then it will automatically send me a task to remind me to do the referral because I, I sometimes forget. So it's a nice little safety net of doing that. So you select whichever one is valuable, and that's what I've done here. So that will work there. So now if I go back and do that, so I'm going to type in something here. So hashtag H G O. Helps I can spell. By doing that. You can't see it, but it's on my other screen. It's automatically brought up the task um, that basically is populated, as I mentioned, a contact patient guardian to book patient in for a phone review, HE and in, in, in phone in. And then obviously I put the time frame. So if I say three weeks, and then I can click send. And it's done. Nice and easy. Pharmacist medication reviews that I do when I do my prescriptions. And to make that life even easier and to make sure it doesn't launch accidentally, I save that as a quick note. Uh, so I can't do that there, so I'm just going to have to discard the record and go back into it so I can show you. So if I go into quick note, uh, text presets, task, so it's the second one down, task sent to arrange medication review with pharmacist. And that will only launch when I put that specific code in. So if I click send, um, and I'm actually going to do this, so um, no specific task relating to this done. If I click save. If I go back into Minnie Mouse's records, you can now see an additional task has arrived. If I click on details, contact patient, book for a routine pharmacist medication review. That's automatically sent the task to our team to book that in for them. And I'm going to get rid of that so they don't try and book that with Minnie Mouse. Um, and there we go. That is basically how you can do basically how you can do various different types of task automations. And you can set this up for any kind of practice system or platform that you want to do within your, your practice. You can have it set for individual clinicians. So like I said, I've got one for myself. You could set this off as a general one. The important thing is to make sure those codes that you type in are not general enough that they could accidentally be launched when you don't want them to. So that's why using things like hashtags or, or strikes or, or that kind of stuff can be useful. And, thing. and that is how you do task flow. If you want to check out more information, have a look at this video right here that explains various other parts of using System 1 more effectively. Alternately, YouTube's recommending this video, which you can definitely check out as we tech enhance your primary care and learning.